welcome to this stimulating conversation we're about to have on parking in downtown Medford. As you know, this is not Campbell Center. This is a downtown college campus. And like all other college campuses around the country, we share parking. All right, moving on to parking enforcement. No, it's not the Medford Police Department. It is the Diamond Parking Organization that hires enforcement people to walk around, and they're dressed in black, and they carry a little computer, and they are taking pictures of your license plate, and somehow the computer tells them about how much time you have in that particular space. Uh, you need to know that parking is enforced and the ticket is $25 so I hope you all pay attention today and never have to go through the process of paying a parking ticket but if you do please visit Diamond Parking it's really right down the street they will tell you what you did wrong they are enormously helpful and they just might forgive your ticket Parking is enforced on weekdays between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And of course, it's not enforced on weekends and city observed holidays. Of course, at night, it's not observed either. Now we're going to move on to street parking. This is your Medford, city of Medford parking map. And I would like you to open it and make sure that you understand that our recommendation is to use this map for parking on the street. There's more to parking in Medford than just using the garages and the, sh and the uh, lots. I wanted to point out just a couple of things on this map. It's kind of hard to find, but right here is HEC at the corner of Riverside and 8th. So begin to look at your area of parking in and around HEC. The other one I wanted to point out now, I'm going to talk about it later, is the red zone right here. There's parking right here under the freeway. Just keep in mind where it is because we'll talk about it later. As you saw on that map, parking here uh, in Medford on the street is color-coded. Uh, free on-street time-limited parking one to three hours. You can never park on the street for more than three hours. That comes, if you need more than three hours, you'll park in a lot or a garage. But on the street, it's one hour, and that's color-coded in purple. Two hours, red, three hours, uh, blue. And of course, you may not park in loading zones. Here are the signs you're going to see on the street. I'm sure these are familiar already to you. Two-hour parking means just that, two hours, no more. If you try to leave it longer, you may get a ticket. And three hours, same thing. These are maximum times. <clears throat> now, there is one thing you need to know right now, and we'll talk about it a in a little more uh, depth later. You can move your car once a day. I don't know whether that would be convenient if you're taking classes, but for instance, you may want to go to lunch after class and you don't have enough time on the street. You can move your car once to a different block face. A block face is defined as one side of the street between two inter intersecting streets. I'll read it one more time one side of the street between two intersecting streets. So in two or three hour zones, you can move your car to a different block face and get an additional two or three hours, even though it's a bit inconvenient. Let's go on to the signs that are important to you when you do park on the street. The sign you see now, you will only see in the downtown uh, purple zone where it's one hour. 
This sign is on, is on every block face in the downtown core. Don't be confused. I have heard some people say that they would go into this area and they see one hour free parking, but then they also see pay by phone and they're confused. And they don't pay by phone, so they wonder, am I allowed to park here? Well, yes, you are, because the bottom sign tells you you can park here for one hour for free. The top sign indicates that you, you can use your cell phone to pay for a second hour. I wanted to show you over here that we have something called the location code. In the downtown core, every, every block face has a location code. And you can move your car once during the day in the downtown area uh, as long as you are in a different location code area and you are only allowed to do it once. There are basically three options for parking downtown. You can park for one hour for free. You can use your pay by phone app and pay for a second hour. Or as I said, you can move your car. Street parking hourly exception. I recently found this area. This is the area I pointed out to you the two-hour parking zone that is under the freeway on East Main Street. The other day I was driving by and I noticed two-hour parking and that's self-explanatory. But look at the top sign and I'm saying, wait a minute, why would I need a, uh, my, to pay if I'm in a two-hour zone? Well, this is the one place in Medford where you can park your car leave it for two hours, and then extend it to a third hour using your phone. The only way you can do it is if you have the phone app or if you pay by phone. But this is an interesting option because if you have a two-hour class and you need three hours so that you can walk to class and walk back to your car after class, it might be possible. This isn't that far from HEC. It's a a good block and a half, but it is an interesting option and another reason for using your phone to pay. We're going to move to lot garage parking and especially those lots and garages that are closest to HEC. This is our <clears throat> Ollie parking map. We have labeled HEC in a large uh, picture of the building. This map has something that your map does not have. I attempted to draw arrows on my map because I wanted you to know that Medford has four one-way streets which you need to learn to navigate when you're looking for parking around HEC. You probably know this, but this is Riverside. It's one way going north. This is East Main, one way going uh, west. And this one is Central Avenue, one way going south. And this is 8th, one way going east. The cool thing is that this little street in the middle of the, of the two one-way streets, this little street, Bartlett, is two-way. Plus, there's parking over here on Bartlett. So just get familiar with our one-way streets. The other thing I wanted to point out right now, because we don't really have it labeled on the map, but it's going to be important for those with handicap placards and those who want to use their phone. Right in the middle here, you will see the Criterion Theater. And then behind the Criterion Theater is a parking area of one hour parking. It's similar to street parking, only it is a lot. And it's one hour parking and those with a handicap placard are allowed to park there and those who use a cell phone can park a second hour there. I also recently discovered these two signs and I wanted to point them out to you because you need to know the difference. Probably you see the difference right away but on first glance what you see is a big P standing for parking surrounded by a green circle but you need to read the rest of the sign because the one on your right is for permit parking only. Those are people who buy permits, their monthly permits. Um, it really is not a great option for those of us attending class. However, 
if you really want to pay $10 a month or however much the permit costs, and they're usually more expensive than that in lots. But in some lots, you will have both permit parking and pay by plate. Now, if you see pay by plate, that means you. That means you can park for whatever free hours are offered in that lot, followed by paid time. So just keep in mind, these two look alike, but they're very different. All right, let's uh, continue on with um, garage and, well, the, the, these two lots are garages. To tell you the truth, um, they are probably the most economical and reasonable place to park for your classes if you don't have any mobility issues. Garage 4 is evergreen and it offers three free hours with only a $4 daily maximum. So that's a very reasonable place to park. Usually for three free hours you can go to everything except a three hour class. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you that you won't see anywhere is if you're on the first floor in Evergreen and there are no spaces, drive around the right-hand corner up to the next level and you will see pay-by-plate spots on that level as well. Just keep that in mind. The other one is Middleford Garage. This also is about an equal distance to HEC as Evergreen, but a different location. It offers two free hours and then 50 cents for the third and fourth hour. So these are very, very good options for those of us that are lucky enough not to have mobility issues. The next lots I want to talk about are three and five. These are different because these are paid lots. They're closer to HEC, but you have to be willing to pay for your time there. There's no free time. Uh, lots three and five. Lots three, there are two lot threes on our map. They're called South Central. And lot five is on South Bartlett. Lot five is actually extremely close to HEC, um, but you need to know that you have to pay for all your time parked there. Lots one and two. One is Bear Creek South, and that's the one that I wanted to point out is the cheapest um, permit parking lot. The whole lot is permit parking. It's only $10 a month. Now, if you calculated that you're taking enough classes to make that reasonable, you could go to Diamond Parking to inquire about a, a permit. I must say, if you get too close to the start of the term, most of these have been sold already. And then park lot two on your map is the Medford Library. That's probably the most popular uh, parking lot for those of us at Ollie. It offers one hour free with the second and third hours, 50 cents each. And then after that, it's a dollar with a $5 maximum. And it's quite close to HEC. Lot garage signs and payment options. You're going to see this sign. This is the one that happens to be in the library. But you will see this in all of the lots and garages because they're all pay by plate. They all have free time. And on this sign, you will see pay by plate. And you will see the number of hours free in this lot. That would be one hour. But as I said, there are other lots with more free time or garages. And then it gives you the cost. And the costs do change as well. Uh, in lots and garages, there's also a pay by phone option. And a location number that's unique to that lot or that garage. Pay by plate simply means you have to know your license plate number and that's the way they enforce the parking and that's the way they keep track. And so you must go to a kiosk to buy your extra hours. If you don't need any extra hours you don't have to go to the kiosk. You just park your car and go to class, for instance, in Evergreen. Um, if you do have to visit the kiosk to buy extra hours, you will pay either with a qu quarters or a credit or debit card. Then, of course, there's a pay 
by phone option. Use your phone to pay with credit or debit cards and you don't have to go to the kiosk. The four digit location code seen on the signs is needed when using pay by phone. Remember I said that this sign you will see in the library? The library is one of those lots that also has permit parking. And so this is a lot where if you saw a big P with a circle around it and it says permit only, avoid that section. And in this lot, they all happen to be uh, parallel with Riverside. And there are quite a few of them, so you need to avoid those sp uh, spots. The nice thing about kiosks, they are smart. They know if the lot garage offers any free time. And what that, what that means is if you need two hours, you tell it when you enter your information that you need two hours, but you will only get charged for one hour at the library because at the library, one hour is free. So I don't want you to learn the hard way. A lot of people at first, they go to the library, they say, well, I get one hour free and I need another hour, so they put in that they need one hour. It's not going to work. You have to say you want two hours, and that's because when you put the information in, it tracks what time it is. And it's not smart enough to figure out that you need the second hour. To activate the kiosk, the first thing you do is press any button on the right of the screen. And it would be any of these little buttons right here. Just press one of them, that activates the screen. Next thing, you select hours or all day. You're probably going to select hours. And then you put in, it'll ask you how many hours do you want. And you'll put in the total number of hours you need. And then it'll ask you for your license plate number, which you enter right down here on the keypad. If you're like my husband and I, you're going to need your reading glasses. So be sure to have them. Oh, the other thing is be sure to have your license plate memorized before you go to the kiosk. Next thing is you enter your license plate number. And you pay by inserting your card or your quarters. And make sure you have the exact number of quarters. If you want 50 cents, put two quarters in, and so on. If using your card, remove it quickly. And by the way, if you use a debit card, you do not need a PIN number. Press Done to print your receipt. And then, of course, you're going to dis uh, display your receipt on your car dash. This is a picture of the receipt. The only reason I put it up here is to show you that on the bottom it tells you when you have to be back. It tells you the, the, t the day's date and the time you have to be back. So be, be aware of your return time. Just to summarize what we've seen, we've seen these three most common signs for parking. The one on your left is only in the one hour downtown parking zone. The one in the middle is pay by plate. And then, of course, our friendly, very smart kiosk is on the right. Uh, this is one of your handouts. And I should thank one of my committee members for putting this together for us because it's so handy, especially if you're using pay by phone because it has uh, all of the places you're likely to park, all of the garages and lots you're likely to park, and the codes. If you are choosing to park in the downtown core, those uh, code location numbers are not on this cheat sheet. But they're so visible. There's a sign on every single block face, so you shouldn't have trouble in those uh, when you're parking in the core.